Hey there folks, it's Nick from Beyond the Specs, and today we're looking at the brand new, the highly anticipated, Edel Crony, Edel Crony, Jib 1, N not Jibone, bone, Jib 1. Now, the Jib 1 is a motion control jib that fits in a backpack and retails for about $1,300. And for those of you who are super into motion control like me, you guys probably already know why that's special and probably have already heard about the Jib 1. But for those who don't know, let's take a moment to talk about why motion control is so important. Motion control isn't as simple as simply stabilizing motion in camera. It's all about repeatability. When it was first developed in the 60s and 70s for movies like 2001 Space Odyssey or Star Wars, they didn't really have all the tech we take granted today, like easily programmed motors or usable computers, and those things weren't so easy to come by. And you have to realize how essential motion control was to those films, because they had such a small margin of error to composite these shots together, they had to be super precise. Otherwise, that Death Star would look super fake or cause you to throw up in theaters because of motion sickness. And obviously, no filmmaker wants a, their viewer to fall ill while watching their film. So they just invested a lot of money into the technology and brought it to the world sooner than it should have been able to. So there was so much love and engineering and sheer financial firepower to bring this tech to the world ahead of its time. Now, I'm lucky enough to use motion control in my day job. Using traditional equipment like mechanical arms gives you just so much freedom to create these incredible and repeatable moves. And so when I heard that there was this technology out there that can open up the game to a whole slew of new filmmakers, I just got really excited. And when I first saw the Jib 1, I could tell how much love went into this thing. There's probably so much time and craftsmanship and probably a lot of Adderall that went into making this what it is. And this completely changes the game and opens up a whole slew of different shots to a lot of new filmmakers. And honestly, that's not a bad thing. But is the Jib 1 worth the hype? Is it too good to be true? And are there any annoying drawbacks? We're gonna find that out and much more, so let's dive in. Most gear reviews will give you the specs. We go beyond them. Follow along as we go through the latest and greatest in cinema gear while figuring out if they're right for you. This is Beyond the Specs. Quick note for our new viewers out there, on this show, we go beyond the specs, which means if you're looking for anything like codex, IO specs, or anything that warrants a chart, go somewhere else. And by somewhere else, we mean please pause the video and take a look at the chart. Please don't leave us. All right, so this is the jib one. This is the Elecrony Head Plus, which lets us control things like pan, tilt, and focus that we use on the Jib 1. And the Jib 1 is just one axis. The Jib 1 is built like a conventional Jib where you have a seesaw design where you put your camera on one side and your counterweights on the other. But unlike a conventional Jib, you actually have battery-powered motors on this thing that controls the arm and moves it for you. Because you program moves using a companion app, you're able to actually hit some pretty specific points and have a hands-free product and environment for you. As a Moco operator, this was just really fun because it took me about a fifth of the time to keyframe than it normally would, and it nailed some pretty specific points, especially on focus, even though I was shooting wide open. And that just lets you do some moves that you can't do handheld. Now, on the off chance they're still trying to make a Windows phone work, be warned that this app is only available on iOS or Android devices. And speaking of the app, the reviews are in and they're not great. At the time of this review, the Apple Store reviews were about under three stars and Google Play had about under four stars. There's not really any in between. To first begin, you have to pair up your devices to your app and we found that if your phone falls asleep or you turn it off, you're gonna have to repair them and go through the whole process again. And that's incredibly frustrating, especially when it, you're doing something that's time sensitive. And normally we would suggest some design changes or something in the next generation that would solve the problem. But here the solution is much simpler. Hello Crone, fire your software engineer and spend your money on someone who knows what they're doing. Let's take a moment to talk about the hardware. Now the build quality on the Jib1 is really great. 
except for where it matters. Now, all the unibody parts are well machined and rigid and well designed, but most of the contact points and any place you actually need to mount things, well, they're not secure. And it's not the end of the world, but you're gonna wanna be really careful if you're putting something that's expensive or heavy on there. And you're gonna wanna be really careful not to put anything that's heavy and expensive. But once you have this all unpacked, it does take a while to set up. And if you're capturing an interview, it might be good to get someone else to set it up for you while you capture those sweet, sweet establishing shots. And quick life hack, before you go out on any shoots, we suggest setting it up for the first time because like a gimbal, once you put a camera on there, it's pretty easy to balance and set correctly the next time with some minor adjustments. Now, once you get the jib one balanced and your app is ready to program, it's time to calibrate. And the calibration process is pretty easy, but if you're using anything that requires a follow focus, you need to be careful. The follow focus motor has a tendency to over torque and while if you use a lens that is pretty robust, it's fine, but I wouldn't be putting any vintage Soviet glass on it. Onto the actual keyframing part. Anyone who's used motion control in the past knows how long it takes to keyframe. But with the Jib 1, it's as simple as sending it to your endpoints and clicking a button. El Crony does the rest for you, and it's a really intuitive and smart choice on their part. The thing is, it's not 100% accurate. It's almost like a giant gimbal. It gets you to the point, but doesn't really have any precision in the arc. What does that mean? If you have any focus points in between, you're not really able to set those. And if you're looking for something that's super precise, this might not be the product for you. Once you have the app programmed and the moves ready to go, the motion on this thing is pretty damn smooth. I've been using it for a lot of tabletop shoots recently, and it's pretty impressive how smooth the motion is for something this size and that can fit in your backpack. It's a pretty big win. Now, it's powered by four Sony MPF batteries that we have a little bit of a call out on, and that's to keep them charged and ready to go and to make sure that they're the same size. Otherwise, if you swap one out that's a different size, it's gonna throw the balance off and you're gonna have to recalibrate the whole thing. But, in terms of motion, it's pretty smooth and looks smooth here. But to see if it's smooth in post, we go over to our production czar, Kevin. Kevin? Hey guys, it's Kevin, a post-production specialist here at Beyond the Specs, and today we're looking at the Edelchrome Jib 1 to assess how smooth the motion is on its footage. Now, the really cool thing about this being a motion-controlled jib is the amount of freedom it allows me as an editor. For tabletop stuff like this, I can match cut to any of the other takes we have. And as you can see in the comparison, there's a little bit of jitter here and there, but it's nothing a quick motion stabilization can't fix. I didn't really see any rapid changes in depth, height, or width, making it super easy to keep the screen from tearing or warping during the stabilization process. And at its core, it does what it does pretty well. All right, let's go beyond the specs about what it's like to actually use this thing. Now, when it's up, working, and functional, it's actually pretty nice and works as it's intended to do. Now I've been using it as a tabletop rig for a couple of videos and you'll probably see the footage in a couple of them coming up and the footage delivers pretty nicely. It was quick, it was easy and it created some incredible moves that I would be pretty proud of putting out there. Now Edelkron is doing something incredible here by creating this motion control jib that's $12.99 and fits in a backpack. And sure, the backpack kind of looks and feels like something you use for sleepaway camp, but it can fit in a backpack that you carry on your back. That's what matters, America. Now, it always seems like Edelkrone is developing solutions to problems filmmakers never even knew they had. And these creative solutions keep adding a lot of variables to the filmmaking process that end up giving you a lot of creative options and allow filmmakers to go beyond what we've even seen before. And we simply like the sound of that. But if you don't practice a use with care kind of mentality, there are some ways that this is risky. Now, if you're going into a high pressure environment that's time sensitive, you might miss something if you're not careful. And all these small issues could result in compound into a larger one. You might miss locking the mounting mechanism or actually not setting the locking mechanism when balancing and everything could fall and break. And if I wanted to spend $1,300 that resulted in thousands upon thousands of damage, I just moved back in with my ex. Now, Edelkroni is going into new territory with this one. 
They put out a lot of solid pieces of equipment in the past, but there's just too many moving pieces on this one. No pun intended. This rig works better in a tabletop environment than let's say a mobile solution for an interview setup. For something like that, we'd probably recommend the Rhino. There are some serious perks to the jib one. Being able to manually position moves simply by moving the jib to the position is an ingenious way of doing motion control quickly. Being able to fit all this into a backpack is another value add that we absolutely love. And for those reasons, we're keeping it. And you'll probably see a lot of the moves we make in future videos. Most people that buy this, this will be a great buy and a great tool. But if Elecrony can fix the machining on their locks and fix the gearing on their motors, they could probably become one of the most respected authorities in low cost motion control. For that, however, we're going to have to wait for Elecrony to come out with the Jib 2. Thanks for watching this episode of Beyond the Specs. Like and subscribe, drop your questions below, show us your favorite camera moves, and click our channel icon to see the latest and greatest in camera tech. Take care, guys.